Okay, let's do this. Right, uh, first of all, this is the first podcast I've done for a while. I've been moving house lately, so I've just had so much to do, so much to think about. Pretty much everything is boxes. If you're watching the video version of this, uh, you can probably see a couple of boxes in behind me. But uh, I thought my girlfriend's out for around half an hour or so. She's gone to do a bit of shopping, so I using this opportunity to jump on and make a podcast for today. So uh, the topic of the podcast today is how important are step counts? Now, I had a member in my membership group ask me, how important are they in creating a deficit or keeping yourself in maintenance? I.e. if I got to 14,000 steps in a day, but I've eaten maybe two to 300 more calories than usual, is doing an extra 5,000 steps going to make that much of a difference? Okay, cool. So let me talk about where this whole step count thing actually comes from. So for some of you, you would have had my free ebook, How We Use Calories. If you don't have that one yet, uh, drop me a DM, drop me a comment, or go to the link in my bio, and you will be able to get yourself a copy of that. But basically... There's four ways that we burn calories. One of them is for our BMR. One of them is through NEAT, otherwise known as non-exercise activity thermogenesis. The other way is through thermic effect of food, otherwise known as TEF. And the last way that we burn calories is through what's known as EAT, which is exercise activity thermogenesis. Now, I briefly spoke about this before as well. On, a, on a th- I think it was something else that I recorded once and I made this into a reel and I had some gobby 19 year old shit on TikTok saying oh this is stupid you don't know anything about weight loss oh motherfucker shut up I've lost 40 kilos I know a little bit more about weight loss than you do so with eat exercise activity thermogenesis this only accounts for 5% of our daily calories burned. And the reason is, is because we don't spend that much time exercising. We have 24 hours in a day and we only spend roughly, assuming that you do exercise seven days a week. Some people do, some people don't. Most of us will exercise from anything to around 20 minutes to an hour. Now, someone is going to watch this and be like, well, I exercise for three hours. Yeah, great. But the point is, is that we spend more time not exercising in our life than we do exercising. Then we've got the thermic effect of food, which is known as TEF, and that counts for another 10%. And that's basically our bodily uh, function as we digest food and uh, send the good stuff from our bodies to other parts of our bodies and yeah, basically uh, turn some of it into pee, turn some of it into poo, get the proteins to our muscles, get the water to our muscles, and uh, put everything where it should go in our body. And we burn calories by doing this, around 10% of them, in fact. Now, this is where we come on to NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And this is where step counts come into play, because... NEAT is everything that you're doing when you're not exercising and when you're not resting, which is pretty much going to be a most, if not a significant large chunk of your day. So this is why I can't remember where specifically the whole get the 10,000 step thing in came from. Off the top of my head, I think it was recommended by some doctor or something somewhere now. And a lot of trainers tend to go with recommending this to try uh, get your neat up because it is a good way of doing it. And the reason for trying to get your neat up and burn more calories is one, because it's free. It doesn't cost you a thing. So little things like standing versus sitting. Okay, so if there's an opportunity to stand when you're sitting down, maybe take that opportunity if you're looking to burn some more calories because standing is going to be burning more calories than sitting down. This is why they're another reason why they're introducing standing desks into a lot of uh, workplaces. Um, Like I said, it's free and you can really get the most out of this. And another reason for this is, is we're the most sedentary we ever have been in the history of the human race right now. Think about that. We live in a world of convenience. Everything is so easy to get by and we don't 
really have to do much moving around anymore. And especially more so since I moved to Australia, I noticed this where Australia is pretty big. It's a lot bigger than people think it is. And it takes a long time to get anywhere. Meaning a lot of people go in their cars to get places. People here are very, very reliant on their cars. I believe it's the same in the States as well. Two countries that have big obesity problems, the States and Australia. Though I would say it's probably worse than the States. Australia, Australia, they, they tell you over in Australia that there's a big obesity problem. I don't think it's as bad as they make out, especially if you're living sort of near the ocean um, because you've got the whole beach culture there. There's a lot of beaches in Australia and, you know, a lot of people do make somewhat of an extra effort here to stay fit. People, t I, f I get the general consensus since I've been living here for around seven years now that people actually care a bit more. Uh, so with your non-resting or exercise calories, this is where many of us are now failing on because we have less and less reasons to move. We have cars that go everywhere. So if you think about it, let's say hypothetically speaking, you have an office job. You wake up in the morning, you walk down uh, over to your kitchen, you make yourself some breakfast. Maybe you're not a breakfast person. Great, do what you want. You take a very, very short journey to your car. You drive to work. From there, you take a very short journey from where you parked your car to your job, where you're going to be sitting down all day, and then you do the th same thing in reverse to get yourself home. So when you think about it, throughout the day, you've had very little to no reason to move at all because you've been sitting at your desk all day. So when I have personally coached office workers in the past, I try to give them a few strategies uh, to try get their neat up non-exercise calories if you will some of the strategies i give out for example is if you have an office where there's a couple of floors whenever you go to the toilet try to go to a toilet on a different floor and not take the lift maybe take the stairs more um for your lunch break maybe try to have an excuse to go a little somewhere further for your lunch maybe park a little further away from work because that means that you have to walk to work a little bit more and then you have to walk back a little more and these things really do make a difference and having said that just because you try get a high step count up in a day doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to lose weight either now, I've worked I've worked in offices I've also worked on construction sites I've done a lot of different jobs in my lifetime I've worked with construction workers that are overweight some tradies aren't in the best shape of their life. And you know why? Because step counts for them is not a problem. They're on their feet all day. They're moving around all day. And some of them are just plain damn eating too much. <laughs> you know? So, and I know this. I've seen some of them at lunch. Um, I've eaten with them at lunch. Like, some of them don't even take their own food into work. They just order shit. Like, and, and these days as well, they don't even have to go off site to get it. Some of them will just order Uber Eats or whatever directly to work. So you don't even have to make an effort to get your lunch anymore these days. You know, we're not, we don't have the whole hunter gatherer thing anymore where we have to like walk <laughs> to try find our food. But the problem is that's how our bodies are designed. And unfortunately, we've kind of evolved past that but our bodies don't know that our bodies don't know about technology our bodies don't know what a world of convenience we live in so unfortunately it's it's our job to try utilize this and get the most out of it as we can so hypothetically speaking let's say f for one day you've done more steps than usual but you've eaten a few more hundred calories well i would say it doesn't really matter there's no such thing as a healthy diet or an unhealthy diet. Uh, so, sorry, my bad. I'll take that back. There is no such thing as a healthy day or a non-healthy day. It's a healthy diet and a healthy lifestyle. So one hot day doesn't make a summer. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, you have a day where you have eaten a little bit more than you would like. Sorry, I think my video went off there. Oh, well. Uh, let's say you have had a day where you've eaten a bit more well truth be told if you're doing it frequently yes that will make a difference and if you're doing it infrequently it's going to make little to no difference at all like i said there is no such thing as an unhealthy meal it's an unhealthy lifestyle 
There is no such thing as unhealthy food. It's an unhealthy diet. So what are you doing more of and what are you doing less of? Believe it or not, these are the things that are going to make a difference. So if you have had a day where you've moved around a little bit extra that day, great. I would encourage you to try do more of that. But if you've eaten a little bit more that day, again, in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to make a difference because if you're not getting it right every other day, well... By the time you get to the end of the year, your body's, and you know, if you have a low, um, was it, if you've got, if you've got a low NEAT, if you're not ex, if you're not doing, if you don't have a particularly healthy, active lifestyle, by the end of the year, if you've got it, not got that on point, your body's not going to say, oh, well, I remember that day on the 26th of July where XYZ did 14,000 steps. So, um, yeah, maybe we should lose a bit of it. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that at all. So definitely try to just make this a part of your life. Get your exercise up. So try to do get your exercise in three to five times a week is what I recommend. You definitely need a couple of days off, especially the the older you get. I definitely value my rest a hell of a lot more the older I get. Try to get your daily activity levels up. So you've got a big chunk of the day where you're resting and where you're not resting and when you're exercising. So it's that period in between exercise and rest. You can do what you want with that. So the more active you get during that time, the better it is going to be for you overall. If weight loss is your goal, assuming. I mean, why else are you listening to this podcast? Uh, weight loss is my thing. That's what I'm talking about, right? Uh, so I hope that one clears it up. Uh, definitely. And I would say as well, don't worry too much about the whole calories uh, thing when it comes to your lifestyle either. Yes, of course, like... If weight loss is your thing, tracking calories is definitely going to help. But don't be too anal about it day to day. Because like I said, it's what you're doing over a long period of, of time that counts. Like, like I said, one hot day does not make a summer. So you might have a good day. Try to have another good day. Try to have another good day. Try to have another good day. Oh, I've had a bad day. Oh, big deal. Well, I've had about six good days this week. Cool. Move on. Let's have another uh, six good days next week and try to keep the momentum going. That's what's going to make a difference to you. So if you have an off day and you've eaten a little bit more, I would say don't worry about it as long as you're not overeating every day. That's that's what's really going to make a difference is not doing things every day or doing the right things every day. Cool. Well, I hope that uh, clears that up, guys. I hope I haven't missed anything out either, but uh, if you do, always you can hit me up. I'm quite easy to get a hold of. Uh, head over to the link in my bio. Uh, drop me a DM on Instagram. There's many, many ways of contacting me. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. I'll speak to you soon.